You guys have spoken quite a bit about dandelions. So here, in this area, but also in other places, there are a lot of them. I was just over there playing with the pressure reduction valve to increase the pressure, but it appears that this has a limitation in itself. And I now want to remove it completely so that we get the irradiation in better shape because we are supposed to be able to drive a lot more wobblers than currently are working and uh, yeah that should work so our pump is able to produce nine bar so it says and we are not getting it <laughs> at the other end This area here is the beginning of our nursery. So right now we have a little bit of that close there to cover the earth so that nothing will germinate and we can irrigate the plants that are in the holding pattern. The area is pretty big. We have big plants and of course they are doing what uh, the dogs have to do to establish the ranking order again. This is nothing too serious as long as it's like that. So do not pay attention to that. So this is the first area. And until right now is getting the remaining plants that we received for the Miyawaki forest. So it's basically the surplus. And we will park them here and give them some irrigation. It is prepared already. We just have to run the hose and install the wobbler. And then we are getting more of this um, plastic to put down so that we can cover the whole area. And I guess we can put here two or three of the wobblers to cover the area. And then we will have our vetiver nursery in the part here that is extremely sunny and a little bit there in the shade. Um, we will then put the other plants that require less irrigation and yeah this dog thing there this is just normal so Schneemann is just explaining to the other that he is boss and this is mostly just growling and, and barking and intimidation and uh, as long as the one at the bottom accepts it nothing serious will happen because that's the whole point of this exercise. And I could now go in there and separate them, but then they will figure this out later. So I better leave them be and let them do their thing. That's what they do. The females also do that, but to a lesser degree. So nothing to worry about. Yeah, you can already see things are being accepted. As long as the one at the bottom, who's Knut, is not trying to question Schneemann's superiority in rank, nothing will happen. And that's the whole point of this. See? No quietness. I come mostly. When they start to lick, their tongue, it also means that the message has been received and understood. And then basically, this is the end. So you see Knut licking, and that means he has no intention to get up and fight. So Schneemann now makes sure that that's the way it is. And then they're done with their conversation. This is how things work in a pack of dogs. If you have a lone dog in your house, of course you won't see that, because the dog will not do this with you. It's 
So as you can see, we got the first batch. He is now leaving to get the second batch. And then we have all the remaining plants here. So you might be able to see that all this has now dried out or is about to dry out and summer is around the corner and as we do not have grazing animals at the moment this is now still standing which is good so that they can finish its cycle but here's something that i want to explain to people in other climates who might not know about this and i think it's pretty important because i get frequently comments that kind of indicate that people are a little bit confused so maybe that helps so if i pan down here in the shade you can see that there is grass and it's green because this is in the shade and all the moisture that is still available and has not evaporated here because it's in the shade um, keeps these grasses green eventually also these grasses will finish the cycle and then there is nothing left because these grasses that you see are plants for a temperate climate, so for the cooler climate. The dehesa is a landscape where everything is moist and green over autumn, winter and fall, or spring, um, spring, not fall. And that means when the summer comes, it is totally normal that everything dries out and basically goes dormant. The annual plants, everything that you see, they will have finished their cycle, um, let out their seed, and then basically the whole system waits for the moisture to come back. So this dormancy over summer is what elsewhere happens during winter when there is a snow cover. So our winter is summer. I think that's important to understand, that our winter is the summer. So in a temperate climate in summer, things are growing. There is moisture, there is sunlight, it is warm, which is helpful for a lot of plants. But this is not the case here. So summer, here in this area, is a dead zone. So nothing happens. And a few times in the past, in some videos, I mentioned that already, that basically summer is a death trap. And if now grazing animals would have removed all this, and then left, think about transhumans, so left to the northern part of Spain, then this is now open, and now the heat-loving plants, like Cedodon Dacleron, the Bermuda grass, what they call here La Grama, is then able to grow. But Bermuda grass does not grow in many places here, because the animals stay and do not leave. So the animals in summer will then eat everything that is still green or is now starting because it needs the heat and because of all this openness, yeah, you see there's not a lot of shade because the canopy is extremely open and there are no bushes, there are no shrubs, there are no little trees left because they all have been grazed over a long time, decades, centuries. So this used to be a lot denser. Because of all this, now you have drought, but it's a man-made drought based on the management practice of set stocking, of leaving the animals over summer in the same place. And now what used to grow in summer, like the Bermuda grass, does not because it gets eaten too early and overgrazed and then basically it goes extinct. Now, what we are trying is to put this in reverse, and that is what this whole project is all about. We want to make this a dense forest again, and then introduce animals step by step in order to manage the dehesa as it used to be. But first we have to build a new dehesa. So maybe that is a helpful explanation how things are here and what we are trying to do and why this is so different to Northern Europe or North America where things are different because it's a different climate. People from Southern California can certainly understand that because there you also have Mediterranean climate and there are bits and pieces in Australia where the climate is also 
around. So there are other areas where the same climate does exist and we need to take this into account. And so in summary, please understand all what you see is annual plants mostly and in summer they will be gone. So this place, despite all the efforts, will be brown and waterless very soon. Give it a couple of weeks and that will be the case. And over there, we will change that. We will plant things there and irrigate as a first step because we lack also the organic matter in the soil. And so the soil is not able to hold moisture for long enough like it used to. So our idea is to change that. And it takes time. And people say you can do this with animals. And yes, you can, we have seen improvements, but the economic factors surrounding the idea of using animals for this, they are too bad so that it makes no sense. And the money is better spent on planting and buying plants and setting up irrigation and all that is basically the same amount, but the effect is more dramatic. So that's why we switched from using animals to planting directly. It's a more straightforward way and we can do it because the area is not so vast. I would not try planting if I had 1000 hectares to manage. I only have 45 hectares and we can do this in small steps like the Miyawaki forest down there and other things. So every couple of months you will see a positive change here. But you need to consider that this is Mediterranean climate with different rules. So please take this into account when you provide ideas in the comments. I appreciate all your comments, but here and there I always have to say the same thing. And maybe now um, those who, who view this and listen, um, they will now have a little bit um, more information about why um, we do things in a certain way and why we cannot do what elsewhere would be common and useful. So, thank you for that. So, this is just one wobbler that has the red nozzle, which means a lot of liters per hour are passing through that. It's working extremely well because right now it gets the full pressure from the pump and of course all the water the pump can move for, its, uh, yeah, for itself. So there's no other wobbler connected and the circle is pretty wide. I would think it's uh, maybe 13 meters or so. So this is what it can do. And it means we only need one here, at least for the moment.